Big spoilers for 20th Century Boys. If you haven't read the series, here's your exit. This video will ruin things, including the ending, but thanks for stopping by. From here on, we'll assume you've already read through the series. Let's go. One of the most important hinges of the 20th Century Boys story is the prophecies. In the first 50 chapters, these are built upon the Book of Prophecy, written by Kenji and crew, and in the 190 next chapters, it's the new Book of Prophecy, written by Fukube and crew. So what are the prophecies? How does Friend twist the early ones to his advantage, and why does he even want to do the latter ones? The Book of Prophecy by Kenji is the first one we get. At the end of the 20th century, an evil organization plotted world destruction. First, they bombarded San Francisco and London with terrifying biological weapons. Next, they spread the germs in Osaka, famous for the 1970 World Fair. Japan was shivering in fright. Then, the evildoer's next aim was Haneda Airport. Tokyo was overwhelmed with a fear it could not escape. But this is where the real terror begins. The signal of world destruction is fired. December 31st, 2000. With loud rumbling and terrors, a giant shape appeared in Tokyo. A giant atomic-powered robot. It laid waste to all as it spread out more deadly germs. Will the 21st century come at all? Tokyo's, no, the world's fate is in the balance. And then, nine brave warriors stood forth. How will they fight to keep the peace of the world? And there may be more, but that's all we get. These prophecies make up friends' plans leading up to the bloody New Year's Eve. And compared to the new Book of Prophecy, these are all pretty straightforward, releasing the germs and eventually a robot that the heroes will defeat. What's interesting is that the prophecy calls for nine brave heroes. At this time in the story, these first chapters, we don't know everyone who's in Kenji's gang. We've got Kenji, Ocho, Maruo, Mon, Kirion, Yoshitsune, Yukiji, Donkey, and the mysterious ninth member. Now, by the end of the series, we know that that is Conchi, but this is withheld from us to let Fukube seem more of a fit. Fukube slides into Conchi's position, and we think nothing of it because we don't actually know Conchi exists yet. Actually, we probably should call Fukube Katsumata here, because it's a lot more likely that this all was Katsumata. Look at the way he sets up 20th Century Boy the song and the Let's Play lines, both far more in line with Katsumata's character. Speaking of which, it's important to understand that one of the key drives of Katsumata comes from this moment. This sets up a whole vendetta against Kenji, that Kenji is not fit to both literally and metaphorically wear the badge of justice. The whole bloody New Year's Eve is a farce to, yes, gain power, but also to turn Kenji into the villain that Katsumata sees him as, while also building Friend up as the hero of justice. This is how the prophecies are twisted. Friend attributes all of the actions of the evil organization to the Kenji faction, and makes his own side the heroes. In reality, it's the opposite, but they're spinning the narrative that the Friend faction are the heroes. Fighting for Tokyo, no, the world's fate. These are the nine brave heroes, the inner cabal of the Friend faction. As we know, it all goes the way they want. The world eats it up, and Kenji and co are considered some of the worst villains in history. In the next arc, we discover the new Book of Prophecy, written by Fukube and friends. It's assumed that Katsumata himself did not have a lot, if any, input on this book. We see at the end he tried to add the anti-proton bomb idea, but it gets shut down by Fukube. So what's in this book? In 2014, there will be a gathering at a church in Shinjuku, and then a nightmarish world will begin once more. At that gathering, a savior of humanity will arise in the name of justice, but be assassinated. When the Holy Mother descends, she will bring with her either heaven or hell. Long live the Expo, long live the Expo, progress and harmony for mankind. And then, a new world president will be born, 60 million votes for, and not one vote against. History will end in 2015. Ring ring goes the phone, and all the preparations are complete. And the world will fall into ruin. There's also potentially the Pope will fall in the East, though that's not 100% confirmed, and it's highly likely there are a lot more pages in the new Book of Prophecy. The series never lets us look at the book, besides a few pages, but those are all of the ones that are discussed in the series. You'll notice that these are a lot less cohesive than Kenji's book. The Book of Prophecy is this obvious progression of increasing terror, written like the start of a story. The new Book of Prophecy is this hodgepodge of random ideas that only seems to make sense together in the context of the actual 20th Century Boys story. However, each one still gets ticked off by the time we hit chapter 170. Another important contrast to make to the other prophecies is that these ones are based around Fukube's plans. 
If Katsumata was the one spearheading the bloody New Year's Eve, Fukube is the one behind the world president election. Yes, it doesn't go well for him considering he dies, but these are his plans. So why is he concerned with doing all of this? Well, Fukube has a deep drive to be correct, that he's no liar or trickster. What he says must be true. See the expo or the example project for, well, examples. So he has a drive to make all of this come true. This is no longer about making himself out to be a hero. Kenji does hold at least some importance to Fukube, but not as much as being correct and gaining renown. Becoming world president is the ultimate goal of Fukube's friend. So when we get prophecies like, the world will fall into ruin, it's no longer about painting Kenji as the villain, it's just about being right. We see how Katsumata backpedals this after Fukube's death. In the final chapters, he blames the virus on Kenji again and claims that he was an evil alien all along. I guess the most important prophecies to focus on are the world president election and the expo. The latter is obviously a big deal to Fukube, thus the whole recreation, and the world president prophecy is, at least for me, the best of the bunch, particularly the 60 million votes for. The reveal in the series with Kiriko and Yamane talking about the prophecy, how any virus will have a 1% survival rate from innate immunity. Where did the other 5.94 billion people go? It's fantastic, and it shows just how far Fukube will go to simply be correct. Overall, I think both books of prophecy are fundamental to how 20th Century Boys works. It's another aspect of the flashback mechanic. It ties so well into both villains' motivations, despite us not actually understanding what they are until later on. And it's the main way Urasawa foreshadows and sets up the dread of what's coming next. A very effective way of setting the tone. A great part of a great series. There will be some more discussion around this coming up in the big 20th Century Boys video, but that's all for today. Thanks for watching, this has been CG, and I'll see you G's in the next one.